starting off with the Urban Decay B6 Vitamin Infused Complexion Prep Priming Spray. Anytime that you do face paint, you want to have heavy skincare and heavy primers. Next up, my Murad Invisibler Perfecting Shield Broad Spectrum. This has an SPF in it. And truth be told, I still could have used more primers because my face is still blue after this, lol. And then finishing up with the Pore Professional from Benefit Cosmetics. Just making sure that all of the primers are smooth and blended into the skin. I probably could have used one more because of the, the staining that the paint had, but it's okay. Just understand, heavy primers, heavy skin prep, please, before face paint. Next up, I actually discovered this LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation. I already have the foundation, but they had this shade in white, which was intended to be used as a brightener, but I had the novel idea to go ahead and use this with face paint. Um, since a lot of times you want to add dimension to your face paint anyways by brightening up the under eye area and the chin area, I wanted to go ahead and add this on first. When I did my very first test run, you could actually see my pores through the paint. And so I wanted to ensure that I had solid enough layers this time around to make sure that there was no kind of transparency whatsoever and that everything was going to be as, as, as good as can be, I suppose you could say. So as you see, we now look like a ghost. Not on purpose, but we do. And we got all that blended all out and set into place. Next up, the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is the anti-aging one. And I always forget every time I do face paint. Even though this is the eyeshadow primer potion, make sure that you also hit your under eyes and the corners of your mouth, as well as the sides of your nostrils with this as well. I had a tough time keeping the paint solid in those particular areas. And I always think about it like a day too late. So just make sure that you go ahead and get some type of primer on those as well. Now our stars of the show, we have our Paradise water-based makeup from Meron Makeup. We go all over the face with Lagoon Blue first. During my test run, I actually used the Cream Stick Foundation. And I did actually, um, after getting the entire face on, I did actually hit up some of the blank or sparse areas with a little bit of the cream stick to give it f zero transparency to make it fully opaque. The good thing about the Paradise makeup with these large pans is that it's water based. So I don't know if it might have been too quick, but if you saw the Evian facial spray that I had, I actually keep that at my makeup desk and rather than to have like you know a cup of water or have to worry about getting um, messy everywhere and things of that nature I usually just keep that spray bottle nearby if there's anything that I need to moisturize or moisten at my makeup station I'm using a, a giant foundation brush but this is one that came from icing from Claire's and just making sure to go ahead and spread this blue base over evenly. I don't take it all the way down my neck and I did hit my neck first to ensure that since I'm going to be doing everything else and you know tilting my head and everything like that I wanted to make sure I did my neck first so that will go ahead and set into place. The only bad thing about using a water-based foundation is that or, or water-based face paint is that you have to move quickly. 
Um, and you really don't have the opportunity to wait for the layers to set into place before applying another one. So you kind of just have to consistently go and patch up as you work. So there's a lot of repetition in me making sure that I had a good, even, opaque base. And it looks a little bright because of the bright light as well as that white base in the T-zone, but you'll see that we do have some dimension later on, and we'll be adding the black face paint with a smaller brush here soon. If I had been, if I could change up anything, I probably would use the cream stick in black after the blue face paint had dried all the way down because some of it was already in the midst of drying and then when I went to go blend everything out with a sponge some of it came up but that always happens anytime I do face paint the key is just to make sure that with the water-based items that everything's moisturized that you've got a good layer of moisture on it and that you work quickly so that it can go ahead and set into place. Here I took the black and added it to the cheekbones for a little bit, a little bit of contouring, the lower jawline, as well as the top of the forehead. Top of the forehead is what gave me the most trouble, but I was able to get that repaired here pretty quickly. I'm not sure if I have it on camera or not, but in front of me are a variety of sponges as well as the Evian's facial spray and Like I said, you'll see me go ahead and repair as well, layering on top so that way to help give dimension and to fix what was taken up. I am by no means way, shape, or form an expert, but I can throw some stuff together when I can. I didn't realize how much repair work I did. Oh well. Next, I am going in with light blue in the Paradise makeup. Because some of the white had gotten washed down with all of the repairs that I had done. Then just taking a sponge and blending everything out, all that good stuff. Painting yourself blue is not easy. Ah, yes, as mentioned, there is the Meron cream stick. Just adding that on and using that to blend out where anything may have cracked. Again, as mentioned, around the sides of the nostrils as well as below or the lower lash line, that's where it was toughest to keep the face paint. 
So just make sure that you've got that good primer or primer potion, eyeshadow primer, whichever, on there as well. Now going in with a clearance item that I found from Sephora. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, the Filtered Light Setting Powder. I typically use my uh, Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I have a small jar of the regular tone that I use only for whenever I'm face painting. But I went ahead and got this since it was, I think it was maybe like a deal of the week. And that is a very large fate or body sponge, actually, that I got from Ulta um, a year or two ago. And I've never used it until now. And I'm so sorry that I did not show the palette. But this is a pickup from Hush Beauty. This is the Atlantis palette. And I don't know if you guys remember Tarte's april fool's joke way back in the day when they thought that they were going to drop or they made like they were going to drop an icy palette but they didn't um and hush beauty capitalized on that opportunity the shade that i just used was empire which was a navy blue and now we are using the stila cosmetics shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadow in the shade vivid sapphire it is a very very vibrant blue that just kind of sets off the whole look. And you know, I have a, all many of the glitter and glow eyeshadows, but this blue is, it's so pretty. It's got some purple reflect in there as well. Now I'm going in in the inner corner with the shade Tidal from the Atlantis palette from Hush Beauty taking a small detail brush and adding the inner corner highlight. And that palette's only like $12 to $15. It is so vibrant and the shades are very pigmented. And I got it solely for this look. And then the last shade that I'm using is called Tsunami, which has green and blue and I think maybe some black glitter in there just to tie the eye look all together. On the original test run, I had used some black as a smoke shade, and I decided to go ahead and just get rid of that all together and just make it these three shades, including the uh, glitter, glitter and, or sorry, the shimmer and glow. Now going in with Kat Von D's Long Super Brow Long Wear Pomade. This is a 24 hour brow pomade in the shade Scarlet, as Miss Dark Home has red hair and red brows. And then just taking a eyebrow brush or a flat ended brush and sketching that out. Whenever you are trying to change the color of your eyebrows, you want to make sure that you do your face stuff first. Um, typically, if I were to do, you know, my own flesh tone foundation, I would actually do my brows first and then blend the concealer in with the foundation. But since our skin is blue, I don't really have a way to conceal without or to conceal or touch up the brows without compromising that layer of, of uh, paint around them. So that's why you just want to go ahead and make sure that you're very detailed with your eyebrows. Just going over and making this nice small strokes and adding that pomade in layers. Of course, my natural brows are black and you can still see that kind is kind of prominent through the pomade, but the pomade still makes enough of a difference to blend everything. Now using the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner pencil to tight line. Making sure that we add, you always want to add something to the bottom lid whenever you're doing face paint. And next, the Kat Von D Dagger Tattoo Liner. I am a fan of the traditional tattoo liner, but the dagger version, I like how 
the brush has that slightly angled tip, it was a lot easier to do my wings this time around. And for Miss Darkholm, you want to go ahead, at least I would like to, go ahead and elongate the wing. Making sure that it's even. And, and it, since we're going to be adding fake eyelashes on, also making sure that you've got a nice, good, thick band of black on your eyelid. So that way they will go ahead and blend in better. Now going in with the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Foil for the highlight. This is one of not the most recent release that she had, but this is because uh, I know she just came out with the winter collection, but this is, I think it was the fall launch. And using a fan to go ahead and or fan brush to go ahead and add that on. This particular shade or duo is um, Seven Day Weekend and Poolside. And I did actually the seven. I can't remember which side is which side. Looking at this after the fact, but the purple is what I use the most, and then I barely, barely topped it with the pink in that particular item. Now going in with our lipsticks. So this is a combination of the Too Faced Melted Matte Liquid Lipstick and the Too Faced Melted Latex. Going on first with the Melted Matte. This is going to be in Lady Balls. And then later topping it with a little bit of the Melted Latex in the shade Ambalse. Because we're the first girl at school on the track. In retrospect, I could have used a lip liner, but also it probably would have blended and made everything purple around the edges. And I did have to touch up just a smidge with a very fine detail brush and some more blue paint right around the lips to make, um, cause again, the corners of the mouth, that's where it was tough to keep some paint. Now, in order to make sure that your hair from your wig doesn't stick to your lipstick all the time, you just go over it with a little bit. You do not need to do a full coat. You do not need to go over everything. Just a little bit right in the center to give it some pop. Now we are adding contact lenses. I got these from Unixo. These are the Sweetie brand. And also make sure before you add, uh, before you do face paint, put your contacts in, please. And then we then added some Eyelore Lashes Vegas and A, the Lux Collection. These are the Bronze Beauty. And even though I am holding that little fan there, I did not get a good enough coat of glue on there. So the lashes did give me some trouble a little bit later on in the evening, but they still serve their purpose. I 
also in a separate video you will see part one and part two of how we created the entire costume from scratch everything is 100 percent handmade by me including our next little friend who's going to be showing up if I edited this right. It should be her skull detail that sits right there at the top of her forehead. Like I said, the lashes did give me some trouble. But anyhow, as always, thank you ever so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you have any questions or suggestions, hit your girl up in the comment section. If you are new here, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you back on my channel. But if you're not here for me, my shenanigans, my opinions, or anything else it is that you don't like, that's fire. There's an X in the corner for you to click, get your like, and get off my channel. Until then, know that you're beautiful, amazing, wonderful, spectacular, and if no one else has told you, I appreciate you. You guys have a wonderful day.